Welcome everyone, let me introduce myself. I am Manel Rivera, a UITP staff member at the BUS unit of the Knowledge and Innovation Department and I will guide you through this module on the key elements for a successful electric bus operations. In this module, we will focus on these key factors that intervene when operating battery electric buses. The concepts touched in this video are independent of the charging strategy chosen for the bus system, being overnight charging, opportunity charging or a combination of them. However, of course, they become more and more important as the number of electric vehicles in the fleet increases. I will present a little on customer-centered network planning for electric buses. I will make some comments on the importance of IT tools for planning and scheduling optimization and during operations. We will talk a bit about the smart use of energy, the importance of the staff in this adventure, and also the necessity of sharing and exchanging the knowledge for further improvements. So first, we will talk about the opportunity that the implementation of electric bus systems have in terms of rethinking the way we operate our network. This means that battery electric buses will perform better when they drive on routes featuring some uplift characteristics. It is encouraged then to increase commercial speeds to give higher efficiency levels and customer satisfaction, rationalize the number of stops, reduce the number of them when there are too many, and also apply traffic signal priority measures for buses which will help maintain a more constant speed, thus optimizing the use of energy in our batteries. On top, reducing dwelling times at stops with measures such as old door boarding and reduce the use of cash on board will also, of course, speed up buses. Electric vehicles have the opportunity to increase the popularity of the bus systems among the citizens. Additionally, to the inherent reduction of air and noise pollution, an appealing design putting passengers and drivers at the heart of it enhances the system experience. Again, introducing battery electric buses implies a big change on how operators understand their operations. Planning and monitoring the operations has never been an easy task, but doing so with battery electric buses adds some variables that need to be taken into account. For this, the IT tools used for scheduling need to incorporate these variables. Battery characteristics of the vehicles, state of health of the battery, charging infrastructure availability, charging strategies, passenger loads, line profiles, and the log, etc. These IT tools will help us increasing the mileage load on our electric vehicles, always according to the designed range, and avoid being trapped by assigning the electric vehicles to the shorter shifts. Also, the databases in the company need to incorporate the new features of the electric lines or vehicles, and it is encouraged to integrate them in the already existing databases with the corresponding modifications needed, rather than start splitting the data from the very beginning. Additionally, to the classical automatic vehicle location systems, now it's crucial to integrate in the command and control center regulation decisions the data coming from the state of the vehicles and the charging infrastructure, mainly the state of the charge of the battery and the availability of the charging infrastructure. In this sense, of course, land regulation with opportunity charging is more complex than overnight strategies because buses are more infrastructure dependent. Imagine that we have an incident on route and buses need to be diverted or regulation need measures need to be applied to the line. We need to take into account then the charging infrastructure availability at the end of the line or the range of our vehicles in case an additional trip needs to be added to the plant. And also to finish, the data coming from the vehicles need to be properly analyzed to continually improve the planning process and real time decisions. To do so, data management and analysis software will help us on this task. Electric buses in the fleet not only impact operations, but depot design and fleet management. For this, an optimum design for our depot according to our constraints and future plans is needed. Also, as the number of vehicles increase, it is essential to adopt smart charging strategies 
with the support of dedicated software to manage the energy demand from the grid. Uncoordinated charging would mean that when a vehicle arrives at the depot and is connected to the charging infrastructure, it will charge at the maximum power until full charge. When the service ends, for instance, a big number of vehicles get into the depot at the same time. Thus, uncoordinated charging strategies would lead to big amounts of energy demand in a short period of time. Controlling the times and power that the vehicles take energy from the grid will reduce this peak energy demand, thus reducing the energy cost, and also will allow privileged certain day times when energy is cheaper or even renewable sources. In addition, energy stored at the depot can also help peak shaving the energy demand by providing additional power when needed without necessarily taking it directly from the grid. Long-term planning for our fleet is also key to achieve a full decarbonization of our fleet without perishing in the effort. A digestible rhythm for the incorporation of buses in our operations is needed, and the capacity will depend a lot of the local conditions and opportunities, of course. Having a solid and viable plan, aligned or integrated in higher level plans, will also help having access to beneficial funding and financial schemes. If you are interested, you can check the bus fleet renewal checklist, which is made to ease this process and ensure we are not missing anything. The success of electric bus fleet's deployment and operations relies on each member of the operator staff. Bus drivers will need training on eco driving, for instance, how to optimize the state of charge of the battery to understand the technology as they did with conventional engines and how to better manage low-range situations. Customer information and support staff will benefit from basic knowledge on the technology, addressing customers' concerns and curiosities on this new technology, the new buses, the benefits and the challenges of them. Planning department staff and command and control center staff require new skills to incorporate the peculiarities of electric buses in their daily tasks to give the optimum schedules and incident resolution outputs. It is encouraged to incorporate in this training the concept of avoiding using conventional engine buses as a backup. First, because there is a need to get familiarized with the technology, and second, because there will be one day with no diesel buses acting as backup. Fleet management staff need also continuous training to ensure optimal conditions to the fleet with complete different powertrain and maintenance procedures, always hand in hand with bus and, and equipment manufacturers. Finally, we encourage everyone to organize and participate in knowledge exchange and capacity building activities, either internally in the company or engaging peer cities and operators in your region. Also, we really advise you enlarging your global networks and participate of knowledge advancement and sharing activities across the world, such as this one, Solutions Plus. Thank you very much for watching this video and enjoy the rest of your day.